What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Nerf Rival Saturn. This blaster is spring-powered, pump-action with a 10-round magazine, shooting Nerf Rival rounds. Let's get into it. Included is the blaster, detached stock, target, unassembled, balls, and the instructions. The stock is detached for shipping purposes. This is not tactically removable. External overview of the Saturn, starting up at the front. There's no in-strike barrel lug. This is a rival blaster. Above that is the front iron sight, which corresponds with the rear iron sights here. And behind that is the rival style tactical rail right here. In the middle of these two rail segments is the magazine door. To get in there, you pull back the priming handle, which reveals the internal magazine. This holds 10 rival rounds. If you've loaded a rival Kronos, loading this is very similar. You can just push your balls in like that. And after you've loaded 10, you can shut that and you're ready to go. Moving down, we have the priming handle. This is a spring-powered blaster to prime. You pull back and push forward. The prime stroke itself is pretty smooth and the power required is in line with other rival blasters on the market right now. However, this grip is really slippery and it does not have a rear ledge back here. After moving for just a couple minutes, I have sweaty palms pretty quick and my hand was sliding on this grip constantly. More on that in my opinion. On the left-hand side of the blaster, we have an unjamming button right here. After you prime this blaster, you're not able to prime it again, but this button overrides that lock, allowing you to prime again. That allows you to clear out some jams and malfunctions. However, I did not experience any jams and malfunctions with this blaster, but it's there just in case you need it in the future. Moving back in front of the trigger right here, we have a trigger safety. When it's in the down position, I am safe. I cannot pull the trigger. Then you move it up and you're able to fire. Moving back, the trigger pull is pretty standard and this blaster does have slam fire. However, with the slippery grip, I was not able to use slam fire very much. And in the rear, there's a very clear priming indicator that shows orange when you're primed. And back to the grip, it's a pretty oversized grip, which is very welcoming to an adult hand. It would also work for a smaller nerfer, but the proportions of this blaster are definitely aimed at bigger people. This feels like a traditional shotgun or long gun grip. If you're into those, you'll feel right at home on this blaster. And in the back of the stock, we have a sling mount, which is more for a strap than an actual clip. It is worth noting the stock length is a little bit short, especially when you compare it to the rest of the blaster. They boast about how big the blaster is, but then they kind of skimp down on the stock. I feel like it should be a little bit longer but I'm also a giant, so maybe that's just me. That is an external overview of this Saturn blaster. Now to this moving target thing. This target is included with the blaster and it's a reactive target. And no matter how you hit it, there's always one target sitting upright. So you can shoot at it sort of infinitely and that's the point. The construction, it's very thin, lightweight plastic, so it's able to move fairly easily. And it's light enough that if it's on a table and you shoot it off, it's not enough mass to like break something. I think it's a pretty clever design and works pretty well, but you'll see the blaster and this thing in the firing demo. Let's go. Shooting standard Nerf yellow rival rounds. I do apologize, I know it's really hard to see them. Now a little bit of slam fire. Operating the Rival Saturn was moderately entertaining. It operates very much like the Rival Takedown, and I did not experience any jams and malfunctions with the Saturn firing it through my testing procedure. But my hand slips like crazy on this grip. I know I have sweaty palms. Everybody doesn't nerf with sweaty palms. But if you have even a little bit of moisture, this thing is just tough to grip onto. There's nothing in the front to really get traction, and there's no rear ledge. They have these grooves in the grip to help with traction a little bit, but I was really struggling. It really diminished my play experience. But it may or may not be an issue for you if you nerf with dry hands. To compare this blaster to others, 
course, I put it up on my chronograph and achieved an average velocity of 92 feet per second with Nerf rival rounds. So it fits within the rival par between 90 and 100 FPS. It shoots like a normal rival blaster. That's the objective information I can provide on the rival Saturn. Now to my personal opinion. I personally will not be using this at all because my hand slides way too much on this front grip. But getting past that, the rest of the blaster works just fine. I didn't experience any jams and malfunctions. A 10 round internal magazine would make for a pretty fun plinking toy. And keep that in mind, the Edge series is all about plinking. It's target shooting. It's not human on human battle. This isn't really a battle effective blaster, especially for rival when a Prometheus could just destroy this thing. I think this blaster will be best suited for somebody that's larger, probably over the age of 18, that just wants a plinking toy to mess around in their house. At that specific role, I think the Saturn does an okay job. It's a fun blaster to hold. The ergonomics are certainly unique. It feels gigantic. And the spacing between the grip and the shotgun grip, if you're under 14, this might actually be a little too big for you. I'm sure a younger person could use this just fine, but it's not really optimized for a smaller body. And if you have a bigger body, you might appreciate that. This feels like it's built for a bigger person, which is just nice to see. That being said, I think the stock is disproportionately small compared to the rest of the blaster. The whole front seems so extended and gigantic, and then you have this tiny little stock in the back. It just doesn't feel balanced. And I personally hate these colors. I really think this brown and this green clash so hard. This looks so tacky to me. I think they should have painted the stock in this pump grip gray, especially with some type of carbon fiber print, like with the texturing. That could look pretty cool, but this brown with this yellow just looks awful. But hey, that's just my opinion. Hopefully I've laid out all the information for you to make an informed purchase decision on your own. If you'd like to buy one, I'll put a purchase link in the description box below. That concludes this video review. Thanks so much for watching, bros, and as always, stay tactical.